Hi everyone, a massive bit of theory right here, looking at the advantages and the disadvantages of fixed and floating exchange rates, putting them both against each other and trying to work out which one is better. Right, this is a big, big deal here and some of the arguments are not simple. So what I'd recommend is basically copying down everything on this board right now, leaving lots of space to write uh, extended writing to explain some of these points carefully. And hopefully by the end, you'll be crystal clear how to argue a case if a big essay question came on this topic in your exam. Let's start by looking at floating exchange rates. Why might a country want to adopt a floating exchange? What are the benefits? Well, one, it reduces the need for currency reserves. We know that when it comes to uh, maintaining fixed exchange rates, central banks or governments need to have large levels of currency reserves. Domestic currency, yes, but foreign currency as well, which might not be viable and is very costly. With a floating exchange rate, no need. No need to mess around uh, with holding lots of currency reserves, which is good. It means that domestic monetary policy can work freely. Some fixed exchange rate systems will require the manipulation of interest rates in order to keep uh, an exchange rate fixed to a certain currency. Whereas in a floating exchange rate, no need to worry about changes in interest rates to keep an exchange rate fixed. No worry. You can use monetary policy to deal with domestic issues in the economy, whether it's inflation, low growth, high unemployment, whatever it might be. Number three is quite an interesting point, and I've made already a separate video on how a floating exchange rate naturally can help partially correct a current account deficit automatically. That's one of the key benefits uh, of a um, floating exchange rate. Take a, a country which has a large current account deficit or a large trade deficit. That implies that net exports are negative. There is more supply of the, current, of the currency in terms of buying and imports than there is demand for the currency. So on a very simple currency diagram, supply is shifting to the right, which is lowering the value of the exchange rate uh, as a result of imports more than exports. But in a floating exchange rate, increases the supply of the currency, that will reduce the value of the currency, making imports more expensive and exports cheaper, which in theory can help partially correct a trade deficit or a current account deficit. So that's one of the big benefits, it's automatic correction. If you want more detail on that, watch my video on how a floating exchange rate can automatically correct a current account deficit. Uh, this is an interesting uh, point here. Oh, I've, I mentioned that point, sorry, as number four. Let's go back to number three. It's a useful tool, very basically for macro adjustment, as I've just said. Um, reduction in the value of the exchange rate can help prop up an economy. So uh, if the exchange rate fell for some reason, then that could help prop up. Uh, export growth in the country, which can help increase general growth in the country. So, for countries that are very export dependent, they can rely on a fall in the exchange rate to maybe increase export demand and exports. Um, so, it can be very useful to just help solve maybe low growth issues in the economy. If the exchange rate falls, then you're going to have that benefit. And number five here, there are less chances in a floating exchange rate for a currency to be over or undervalued. In a floating exchange rate system, exchange rates should reach an equilibrium which reflects purchasing power parity. In that sense, the currency is valued perfectly, not over or undervalued. Therefore, the risk of speculative attacks, especially if the currency is overvalued, are less likely to occur. But even if the currency is undervalued, they're less likely to occur. Hence, uh, more stability is likely in that sense, with the exchange rate being in equilibrium at the correct level. Uh, more understanding on PPP can be found on my video. Uh, real exchange rates and purchasing power parity. However, what are some issues with floating exchange rates? Well, there is no guarantee that floating exchange rates will be stable. They're left open to the forces of demand and supply. And who knows? The exchange rate can go up and down. It can be very volatile. And the problems with that is that it can reduce the incentives for uh, foreign investors or foreign companies to actually invest in the domestic country where the exchange rate is very volatile. It puts off investment, foreign investment, it puts off trade as well, so for exporters domestically it becomes harder to trade because foreign countries don't really know what they're getting in terms of currency with uh, the domestic currency constantly going up and down. So that's a problem there, re reducing some of the trade benefits when there is high volatility. And also, uh, when we talk about this self-correction number four here of a current account deficit, that's actually uh, a point that's mainly theoretical. In reality, it's unlikely to occur. Why? Because imports and exports uh, are only two of the factors that can affect demand and supply for a currency. There are loads of other factors that are way more dominant, like speculation. In fact, speculative flows are way more likely to affect demand and supply and change the exchange rate value than uh, a current account deficit 
uh, is. Um, so in that sense, the demand for imports, demand for exports, uh, fair enough, that can have an impact on the exchange rate, but nowhere near as big as speculation, which can actually stop the uh, number four point here occurring. So that limits the, the value of a floating exchange rate. We can also bring in the concern about inflation rates. So think about an economy that's suffering because of high levels of inflation. And as a result, it's struggling to export, which maybe means that net, net exports are negative. What well, we've said already, that that's going to put downward pressure on the exchange rate because the supply of the currency is going to be, is going to be increasing more than demand for the currency, which uh, lowers the exchange rate. Well, in trying to correct the trade deficit problems, the lower exchange rate will actually push up inflation again. So if high inflation is causing a problem of reduced export competitiveness, a lower exchange rate can actually worsen the inflation problem through higher import prices and through high demand for inflation as well. So there is a risk that comes about from a floating exchange rate with inflation as well. What about a fixed exchange rate? Well, the fixed exchange rate has got benefits in terms of lowering the exchange rate uncertainty. Um, exporters and importers know that with this exchange rate, it's going to be fixed at a certain level, it's going to be stable, which promotes investment, foreign investment into the country, but it also makes trade a lot easier, exporting and importing in that respect. Some flexibility is permitted. In my previous video on fixed exchange rates, I assumed that the exchange rate chosen was at a, a one specific point. In reality, countries that adopt fixed exchange rates will often have a band by which the exchange rate can very simply move up and down within the band. It doesn't have to stay at one specific point. So some flexibility there. But also, if a government wants to reduce the exchange rate value, it can just devalue the currency. Or if it wants to increase the value of the currency, it can revalue it, as long as other countries agree with it. But the problem with doing that, even though in theory that seems fine, is politically that's not really accepted. It's a sign of weakness if the government has to revalue or devalue a fixed exchange rate. But in theory it can occur and there is some flexibility there. Uh, reducing the cost of trade is another major benefit here. Um, if uh, people involved in trading industries, so in, uh, uh, in exporting industries, importing industries, people involved to protect against um, kind of unstable floating exchange rates, what they might do is actually buy in the future exchange rate market. So let's take uh, a foreign country that wants to buy domestic goods. Let's take the UK, for example, uh, which maybe has a floating exchange rate. Foreign countries who are not sure about the value of the UK pound might hedge against whether the pound will actually rise in value, which will make uh, buying imports more expensive for the foreign country. What they might actually do, therefore, is buy in the future in the futures exchange rate market. So buy now, even though, buy pounds now, even though they actually want to buy the imports or exports, UK exports, even though they want to buy them a long time in the future, they might actually buy their pounds now to hedge against the potential rise in the UK pound. And that's very costly. To buy and to uh, get involved in the futures exchange rate market is expensive. It uh, incurs an extra cost. Um, so in that sense, if you have a fixed exchange rate, there is no need to hedge. There is no need to buy a pounds or any currency in the futures market which is more expensive and that reduces the cost of trade for, for importers especially. They don't need to worry about whether the exchange rate or the currency they're actually buying will rise in value in the future. No worries about that. So no need to actually get involved in the futures market and to hedge against it. <coughs> and also, a fixed exchange rate puts discipline on domestic producers. They know now that they can't rely on an exchange rate falling in value. They know their exchange rate is fixed Therefore, if they are to maintain competitiveness, the only way they can actually do it is to increase efficiency, to invest, to get involved in R&D, to look at innovation. That's the only way to increase competitiveness, to increase efficiency. <coughs> it makes them disciplined in that sense, which is a good thing for them and for the whole economy and for consumers too, who might benefit from lower prices. But there are major issues with fixed exchange rates. Number one, if interest rates are being used to maintain a fixed exchange rate, then we know, let's say uh, the fixed exchange rate is set at a level where the current exchange rate is lower, then the, fi the exchange rate needs to rise to meet the fixed exchange rate, which may mean raising interest rates. Well, raising interest rates may well get the, fixed, the exchange rate back to the fixed level, but it may come with major negative consequences of reduced growth, of uh, higher unemployment, etc. It can have very nasty macroeconomic consequences. So that's not a good thing if interest rates are used to... Uh, uh, maintain a fixed exchange rate. Uh, we also need to question whether large levels of foreign currency reserves can actually be held by central banks and governments. 
to maintain a fixed exchange rate. If it's not interest rate led, which often it won't be, if it's currency reserve led and maintained in that way, can an economy, can a government actually hold large levels of foreign currency? Maybe not, maybe it's too expensive, maybe it's not viable for them, in which case this whole system will collapse. And finally, we can also be concerned about speculative attacks. With a fixed exchange rate, there is no guarantee that the exchange rate that is decided is actually going to be the correct purchasing power value. Maybe it's going to be overvalued, or maybe it's going to be undervalued, in which case a chance of speculative attacks that can really destabilise the whole system is quite likely. And that can again destroy the system, and it can destroy the value of the currency if you're not careful. Therefore, what do we tend to see in the world? Well, most economies nowadays agree that the merits of floating exchange rates outweigh the merits of fixed exchange rates, but there are still major concerns about some of the, uh, uh, the issues with floating exchange rates. So what you tend to see is floating exchange rates the majority of the time, but if there are issues with the exchange rate, then governments uh, allow room for, the, for themselves to intervene and to solve potential issues. So that kind of gives them the best of both, really. Majority of the time, floating exchange rate, but if they need to get involved, there is room to do so. Room for manoeuvrability, you can say, uh, to actually intervene in markets if they need to. China is a good example of uh, intervening lots if they're not happy with the floating exchange rate. Thanks so very much for watching, guys. Really important stuff there. You may well get an essay question on this. If so, you need to be prepared to answer it. Hopefully this video has done it for you. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.